What questions are useless to ask about relationships? The internet today is full of information on relationships, psychology, and it's all great. And uh, in certain cases, it promotes our knowledge. At the same time, I think in many cases, it creates the wrong idea about what we should focus on. There are certain questions you should not be focusing on because they will not bring you further in relationships. Today, I would like to look at five typical questions that are really completely useless to ask if you want to improve your relationships. I'm Catherine Field. Welcome to my channel on how to be in touch with your true self, find the right relationships and define your life purpose. On my channel, I always give practical advice on how to improve your relationships so that they can create peace and harmony in your life. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel and share it. The internet today is insanely toxic. But if you want to be really happy, and I think many people want to be happy, it is sad to see that so many of us are researching and posting a lot of information on relationships without the focus on what is truly important. In many cases, those questions are leading you away from the main goal of improving your relationships. The sad part is that we rarely ask critical questions about the information we receive from the internet. Not every question is worth asking. So let's look at five common ones. You can add in comments if you think that I've forgotten something. So the first question that's like the biggest one that every relationship coach and anybody can talk about is, do they like me? Does uh, the man like me? Does the woman like me? What are the 10, 15, 50, 100 signs that show that this person likes me? Especially if it's about men, like if you're a woman, you want to figure out if the man likes you. It is a relatively useless question because in many cases, the thing is that even if he does, but he doesn't do anything about it, he doesn't like you that much. And every honest relationship coach will tell you that. This is why I have watched many videos on that topic, by the way. This is why many of them, though they enumerate those um, signs, they still say at the end, if he doesn't do anything about it, he doesn't like you that much. So don't fixate on this question. The thing with men is that men are straightforward. If they like you, and especially if they want to see you in their life, they will show, they will show up. They will, um, through their actions, it's going to be visible. You will not have to ask any questions. With women, women are more subtle. Women don't necessarily hide it so much, but sometimes we just don't know. Although even then, if she doesn't know, most probably it's a no. So let's say you have figured out all of those signs and you see that this man supposedly likes you. If he doesn't really do anything about it, what is your next step? Will you try to bring him to it? it in, this, in this case, it means you're forcing them to do something they might not be ready for. He may like you, but he may like you in multiple ways. He might just like you as a person, as a friend, as just a nice woman. He may like to talk to you, to spend time with you. He, he might like you because he, there is nobody else around. It doesn't mean he is ready to commit because usually a woman wants some sort of commitment. If, even if it's not marriage, it can be some sort of exclusive relationship. So even if you know all of those signs and there is no action on his part, all you can do is just wait. If you want to, of course, because if you make a move and he's not ready, he's not ready to commit, he likes you maybe, but he's not ready to commit, you will not change his mind. Because if you try to force it upon him, it's going to scare him away. You may ask what to do if I like someone and I really want to know whether they like me back. Of course, you can observe some of those signs. You can also watch those videos. <clears throat> but don't base your judgment about this question solely on the information from the Internet. Look at the person first. What is this person doing to show you that they like you? Do they even try to show you that they like you? Or maybe you th see they like you, but they are withdrawn. They are distant. Maybe they don't want to show you they like you. This can also be a sign of them not being ready for something more. So all you can do is be the most attractive yourself as you can possibly be. It doesn't just include uh, looks. It includes also some past mistakes you've made. Work on that, it's going to bring you a lot further in life because it will open you up to many new possibilities, to many new people. If you just fixate on one person, you will eventually lose because, first of all, it intensifies your attention on them and that may scare them away in, even if they like you. The second question that is completely useless to ask is who is hurt more after the breakup? Men, women, doesn't matter. 
It will not give you anything if you just ask why somebody is hurt, who is hurt more. First of all, how do you measure that? There is no, there is no really, because when people say, let's say, if a man is hurt after a breakup, he goes to a strip club. It means he finds a woman there and he has a one night stand. It means he got over me. No, it doesn't mean that. It, it, can, it can mean multiple things. It doesn't necessarily mean he got over you. He might suffer for years after this and go to a strip club every evening. It doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't mean he got over you. It doesn't mean he didn't get over you. Knowing who's hurt more is just an ego question. It means you want to satisfy your ego. Is he hurt more than I am or not? Okay, he's hurt more than you are. So what? What's next? What is your long-term solution there? On this channel, I talk about long-term solutions because in many cases, I see like 90% of information online is just about short-term results. That's the problem. The only thing to do after a breakup is to make your conclusions, to move on, to find new people, to heal yourself. It was If it was very painful, that's all you can do. The third question, also very popular, who falls in love faster men or women? That is a very tricky one because uh, actually men and women fall in love quite differently because we perceive love and relationships in a different way. I cannot go into this for the sake of time, but it is different and men develop their attraction and falling in love with women differently. Even if you know that he or she did fall in love faster, what then? What do you do with that information? That is the question. Approach every information you receive in a critical way, from friends, from the internet, from anything. Instead, we should be focusing on what makes our relationship work if we have a relationship with this person. If we think they are still not in love, don't treat them as if they are, because it might put a pressure on them. So figuring out whether they are in love with you or not currently is not really giving you any information. You just have to judge based on their actions towards you. The fourth question, the favorite one, manipulation tactics. How to make them do this or that? How to make them call you, text you, invite you, marry you, I don't know, sleep with you, anything. This is completely useless if you want to be happy. If, of course, you play games and you enjoy it, then most probably you're not on my channel for it. This is something that will actually ruin your life long term if you practice this communication over and over again with different people. Because then you develop that as a habit. That's another side effect of that. If you try to make people do something, first of all, you should ask yourself, why do I need to do that? Do I think that I'm so worthless that people cannot really be attracted to me, that I have to make them come to me? And again, if it's for short-term results, maybe it's good. I don't think it's ethically or morally good. I don't believe in that. But that's your business. If it's about long-term results, about long-term relationships, happiness, it's love. It's not leading you anywhere. Because even if you make somebody text you or call you or invite you or even sleep with you, it will not develop long-term bond with them because you need connection to, uh, with that person. In order to develop connection, you have to be genuinely your true self. I know it sounds very radical in our times where everybody pretends to be someone they're not. But that's exactly what we should be learning. We should be learning to open up. Again, being open, opened up doesn't mean being um, ready to receive any reaction and to make yourself vulnerable to the wrong people. No, it means if you see that the person is approaching you and they are nice, they are gentle, they can be attentive... Open up a bit. Don't open up completely. Open up a bit. And then you see what happens. And then you judge your reaction based on that. It leads us to a bit different topic. Sometimes I sidetrack. But in this case, it's relevant. So making them do something will not bring you anywhere long term. Remember that. Rather ask a question. Why do I need to do this? What is the underlying reason for me to think that I can only control people and that is what is bringing them and keeping them in my life. Question number five, also very popular. Are women or men attracted to a certain type? To a certain weight, to a certain color, size, anything physical? If Even if people are attracted to a certain type, let's say you say all men are attracted to blonde women, just for the sake of example, it does mean all blonde women are happy. Just the same way, if men are attracted to all beautiful women, it doesn't mean all beautiful women are happy. We are talking about happiness here. It doesn't mean that looks can bring you happiness. That's 
I hope not a new information to anyone. Figuring out what type is more popular is only possible, is only interesting for short-term results again, for something fleeting, for something that is not very leading anywhere. If you want to be happy, it's not about your looks. This is why we see some people who are really averagely looking, but they are in great relationships, marriages that last for a long time. And those people, first of all, what they have, they have a good personality. It cannot be someone mean, evil, manipulative, and uh, angry all the time, as just as example, right? It is someone who knows a certain level of balance in their life. Another reason for this question being completely useless and complete, complete nonsense is that we see in practice that many people marry not the type that they usually go for. Like they can say they like um, uh, women, I don't, I don't know, redheads or blondes, and then they marry a brunette because the long-term connection is not based on looks. Looks are just the first moment it attracts to you. That's it. That's as far as it goes. It does not make people stay. If you ask a man, especially men, because men are more attracted to looks, or let's say more vulnerable to looks, if you ask a man, why did he choose to date her? He might say she's beautiful. If you, if you ask a man, why did he stay with this woman for a long time? Why did he marry her? Why is he happy with her? He will never say because she's beautiful. He will say some qualities, right? He will say certain qualities of character that she has that he finds very attractive and he fall, fell in love with. It's never about the looks. Unless, of course, you're a trophy wife, but... Watching or reading this information on superficial questions about relationships, about how to make someone like you, how to manipulate, um, it's not leading you anywhere. And you should be asking yourself a question, why am I interested in knowing that instead of improving myself to make myself naturally more attractive? We live in this time of manipulation where manipulation has become so normal that people don't even notice that anymore. And this is the sad part. But that is exactly the reason why many of us suffer so much, why many of us cannot build good lasting relationships. So please be mindful of that. Pay attention to the information you receive from anywhere, from other people, from the internet, because you have to think, does this information bring me anything good or it just clutters my mind? Dealing with all of those questions, waste your energy on something unnecessary. You're basically wasting your life on things that do not bring you further. Be mindful of that. Think about that. that years from now, you will be thinking that you spent two, three years, maybe, uh, let's say, visiting seminars on how to, you know, uh, attract people in a superficial kind of way, how to play tricks on them. And then later, years from that, you will see that you are completely alone because, of course, people you attracted are shallow people. Because if you use shallow tactics, you, you attract shallow people. Instead, you would be you would have been happy with somebody, but you did not work on yourself in that area. Work on yourself because this is the biggest investment you can make. Do not ask too much about other people. Observe how people treat you. Make your conclusions based on that, not on how somebody tells you it is supposed to be. If you have other questions to share that you think are completely overrated on the internet, please write in the comments below. Like this video, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.